So, I've been playing a lot of Vigor lately. At least, more than I have in the last seasons in a recreational sense. Of course, every time I play as a content creator, I'm always looking to get clips and little footage bits as well, but with the new updates and changes to machine guns, they've definitely become a lot more prevalent in every game mode, and I find it pretty refreshing. And with that change in frequency, it's gotten me thinking. In particular, about something that's pretty underutilized in Vigor, so I wanted to lay out in plain terms how I personally use suppression as a tactic, especially when I'm fighting against groups. So stick around to the end to learn about suppression and its application in Vigor specifically. So, for those who don't understand it, what is suppression exactly? Suppressive fire is a very powerful tool used both in real life military strategy and in numerous FPS games. It's a psychological practice where firing your weapon at the enemy forces them to stop engaging you for the duration of the fire. And in the context of Vigor, this is something I don't often see people using or talking about, so I figured I'd make this video outlining the importance of it. Now, you're probably thinking that this is somewhat self-explanatory and pointless to talk about. Vigor is simple and even a caveman could understand its combat. See enemy, shoot enemy, kill enemy celebrate and then get headshot while looting the enemy. And that's the cycle of life in Vigor. Now, of course, that's a very dumbed down version of it, but my point is I feel in game we're infested by two extremes that kind of get rid of the relevance of it. We have those who are barely scraping by and tend to avoid firefights because of low level equipment and experience, and then tracksuit clan gamers who run the same meta kits over and over and over again. It's because of this that a lot of times I notice tactics getting entirely thrown out the window, and so this is what I mean when I say I rarely see people using suppression. While I exaggerate a lot in my caveman metaphor, I do genuinely think that big parts of the community view the game this way, and completely negate the complexities of its combat as a result. But that's enough of me rambling about the community, I should really get into the subject matter at hand here. So to bring it back in, I feel suppression is a very underutilized tactic that people don't quite understand the strength of. But what specifically makes it so effective? In general, people will pull off if they're taking heavy fire, especially from a gun that's relatively accurate with a high fire rate. Enemies are much more scared of incoming fire in Vigor in comparison to other games because of Vigor's inherent lethality. One shot to the head makes the possibility of one of those bullets hitting you much more punishing. So unless you're a no-balls person who just snake strafes while sprinting at people because it abuses console's aim assist, then conventionally getting suppressed will keep you from peeking for at least a short time. This is somewhat demonstrated in this entire match on Felkanton, and I find long-range combat with teams the best use case for suppression as a whole. You can see me taking a lot of really long-range pot shots with my M60 that I'm not necessarily trying to hit the person with. If I do, fantastic, but if not, it's not that big of a deal, it's just a few rounds. And Chris tends to criticize me all the time for bringing too much ammo, but generally I try to use as much of it as possible because, uh, well, I'm rich in materials like most of the player base. And if I can keep him from dying by firing an extra 50 or 100 rounds at somebody in suppression, I would much rather be prepared to do that. Whether it's out of an AR, SMG, or conventional machine gun, there's an inherent value to volume of fire well beyond just killing potential. The threat that every bullet imposes on an opponent is something of value that's not to be underestimated, especially when you take into account the second major factor of suppression and vigor, which is, drumroll please, Vigor's sound design. Now, say what you will about the gunshot sound effects on certain guns, I'm looking at you, the L85, but regardless, for the most part, Vigor's guns sound pretty good, especially at distance, and something Vigor's guns do really well in particular is that supersonic crack of a bullet after it leaves the barrel. That sharp crack is enough to instinctively warn you that those shots are getting closer and closer to killing you. And even when you're just getting single fired at from a crazy distance, it still has the same threatening snap. Now, while any gun can utilize this, obviously your larger calibers with tracers are going to have the greatest effect, hence why guns like the M60, the PKM, and the UK VZ-59 are my number one favorites. But others like the MG3, the KK-62, the Suomi, the RPK, the list goes on and on about pretty much all guns with a good fire rate and mag size to back it up. 
Now, I do also want to emphasize, though, that suppression is used most efficiently with these spray-and-pray style guns, where accuracy is not as important, but it also applies to all guns in general. Say someone is shooting at your friend from a really long distance, and they're about to kill them, and you don't have time to necessarily wait to line up a headshot or even a body shot. Firing a few less accurate sniper rounds for the purpose of keeping their head down and not killing your friend is absolutely worth it, and that can be used on an M21 or a VSS or whatever the hell you're using. It doesn't really matter, honestly. And all of this can be applied in solos, duos, or whatever group you're playing with. If you're a long distance from the nearest cover piece and someone starts ambushing you as a solo or as a group, you have a choice to make. Do you stop and try to suppress them or keep running to the nearest cover piece? Normally, if I'm honest, I'd choose the latter because of the delay between sprinting and shooting, but in some cases against some players, it might be better to send a few rounds at them in order to pull them off you. The imposing threat of getting headshot mixed with the sound design might be enough to make them just stop firing at you outright, or it could lead to you just standing still while they're still spraying and have already started aiming at you. So it's obviously very circumstantial. Either way, this video is less of a play this way and you'll get better at the game, and more of a putting the concept out there so you can interpret and apply it to your own gameplay style in your own way. All I can say decisively is that suppression and my and my teammates understanding of it has undeniably saved me from getting sent back to the lobby screen more than a few times. And while in most cases when seeing someone in an encounter, it's better to line up a kill shot and take them out of play as soon as possible, there are other times in gunfights where not taking as much time to aim precisely can be the difference between getting the airdrop or getting a bullet to the head. Not to mention, I feel like utilizing it and having both teams understand and use it to their advantage always leads to more satisfying dynamic firefights, where going for risky flanks on people and coordinating fire at different times is essential to come out on top. Whether you're a new player or an experienced player, I really hope that you took something away from this video and will somehow apply it to your playstyle in the future. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.